Now to a story that exposes a huge abuse of our immigration system. A quarter of foreign care workers are working illegally in other industries. It was revealed by David Neal, who's the Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration. Incredibly, the Home Office has failed to publish 13 separate reports of Neal's work in the last year. Well, I'm joined now by immigration barrister Paul Turner. Paul, welcome to the show. An astonishing revelation that the gentleman in control, in charge of monitoring this information, is putting that information forward to the Home Office. And yet, none of these reports are being published. And this one, which seems to have leaked out somehow, shows that 25% of those coming into the UK from abroad on care worker visas either never work in the industry or as soon as they're in the country, move to other sectors. This is an outrageous abuse of our immigration system, isn't it? I completely agree. It is an outrageous abuse. And sadly, I think it's been going on for quite a while. Uh, and uh, the uh, chief inspector, uh, David Neal, has done a sterling job of uh, exposing the shortcomings in the immigration system. I think the, the problem it could be really breaks down into about two. The headline point would be that David Neal um, is, has not had his contract. Normally, it's a two, three year term. Uh, it's been announced that his contract is going to end in March 2024. Now, he's the person that's preparing these reports. He does his job, prepares them, and then the government sits on them, which is why this has come out sideways. The second reason um, that there's such an abuse would be due to the government not funding the immigration system properly. Uh, it is clear that um, more needs to be done. There are 75,000, 78,000 uh, uh, employers that have sponsor licenses. There are, and this will probably shock you, less than 50 enforcement officers. That's one enforcement officer for 1,600 employers. Is it any wonder that criminals haven't just jumped onto this system? They can see the, uh, that it's easy to abuse. And the real tragedy there, the real tragedy is that um, migrants themselves from places, that uh, India and other countries, are paying between three thousand and seventeen thousand pounds to get a visa that they're for a job. Then they arrive in the United Kingdom and there is no job. Mm. Yeah, Paul, I don't think anything shocks any of us anymore about our immigration system. It seems completely unfit for purpose. And some of the information coming out in this report, Paul, is utterly shameful. For example, the Home Office had issued 275 visas to a care home that did not exist and 1,234 visas to a company that stated it only had four staff on its ability to license. So they're allowed for the claim for 1,234. Paul, all of this will simply make us believe, and don't forget, it's not just those who apply for visas, but they're allowed to bring their dependents into the country as well. This is starting to feel, Paul, like nothing more than glorified racketeering. They're getting into the country without any recompense, without any liability, and it appears without any right for the public to call time on this. Well, I completely agree. Uh, part of the problem is, uh, and if one looks online, you'll find quite a lot of uh, immigration lawyers advertising just how easy and quickly they can get a company a sponsor license. So the whole system is geared up uh, and the government makes money on issuing sponsor licenses, but as we've seen, doesn't police them. So everybody wins apart from the, the, the British public. Um, we're the, the British public suffers as a result of this. The migrants suffer when they turn up and they find that there's no job or they're forced to work for four pound an hour or they're living in uh, the back of a hut in the back of Wales, which happened recently. So this this comes down, I mean, it is sums, it sums it up, which is the government in this case has shot the messenger. The messenger mm. is David Neal. He continues to bring the messages. First of all, they burn them or refuse to release them. And then when he doesn't stop producing the reports, they decide to sack him. How are we going okay. to know if he's not doing his job, just how badly they're performing? OK, Paul Turner, sobering words, immigration barrister, thanks for joining us. 13 reports have gone unpublished. I think it's in the public interest to get every single one of them out there. We need all this information at our fingertips. Why is this information being suppressed? The answer appears to be because it doesn't fit the narrative. We demand, I believe, this should be published.